good evening. Uh, today I'll be uh, just briefly revising the, uh, the topic on uh, follicular monitoring. I'm Dr. Prasanna. Uh, <coughs> uh, I've been practicing the system for a few days, few years. Uh, and in the recent uh, past, we have seen that there's an uh, increase in the uh, uh, trend of, uh, there are more cases uh, relating to follicular monitoring. Uh, and uh, uh, as we see that there are uh, uh, multiple fertility clinics uh, which have come up. So I just thought we'll uh, just uh, revise what are we looking for in the follicular monitoring. So follicular monitoring is uh, basically a simple technique uh, to see uh, the uh, how the, the uh, follicles uh, uh, become dominant follicles and then uh, we follow it up till it ruptures uh, to give the, uh, the mature oocyte. So it, uh, basically it's uh, an art of uh, uh, supporting uh, the gynecologist uh, uh, before they do uh, intrauterine infusion or uh, in vitro fertilization. So with that we can uh, just uh, uh, briefly go through uh, uh, how to do the, uh, what are the uh, basic uh, requirements. I won't be talking about the machine uh, uh, or the, uh, the frequency of the probe or such thing. I'll be just talking about uh, what we are basically looking for in a follicular mo monitoring and um, uh, how we are, uh, uh, what we are supposed to tell the gynecologist uh, uh, when we are doing the follicular monitoring, what we are actually looking uh, in the, uh, the imaging part. So follicular monitoring uh, is uh, a vital component of in vitro fertilization or uh, uh, infusion uh, for the assessment and timing of uh, uh, the in vitro fertilization. It basically implies uh, a simple technique of assessing the ovarian follicles uh, at regular intervals uh, and also uh, document uh, in the, uh, the part of uh, ovulation. So there are uh, 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 the, the protocol consists of basically a, a, a second day scan. That is the, on the second day of uh, the, uh, the menstrual cycle. We just do a basic scan uh, uh, to rule out uh, uh, or to confirm that the uh, patient has no other uh, pathologies which can come in uh, the way of uh, conceiving. Uh, and also uh, to make sure that uh, the, the ovarian uh, size and uh, the basic requirements are in the normal range. And the, the second part will have the serial follicular monitoring, which usually uh, starts uh, on the seventh day, or uh, depending on uh, the uh, the route of uh, the uh, way of stimulation. Uh, there are uh, different protocols which are, I'll be discussing in detail. So why do a follicular monitoring? Uh, these are uh, uh, the simple things that we are, we are actually trying to answer uh, with the, to the gynecology. So we are trying to monitor the follicles uh, to see if the dose given for stimulation of the follicles uh, is optimal. And also to, uh, because the different patients have a different uh, rate of responsive, uh, responsiveness to the hormones. Some people uh, are hyper responsive or some are poor responders to the hormones. And to get uh, the actual dose uh, to be set uh, for the stimulation, uh, we need to uh, know the size of the uh, follicles uh, from the day to itself. And also, uh, when is the actual time for the induction of ovulation? Uh, uh, by giving the HCG, uh, most of the times we try to induce ovulation. Uh, for exact uh, timing of the trigger of ovulation, we need to monitor the follicles. And also, uh, we'll also know uh, since we, uh, we are following that up until uh, the ovulation happens, uh, it is also uh, a reference point for the gynecologist uh, to know when to uh, do the infusion. And uh, of course, uh, uh, to avoid uh, uh, excessive stimulation uh, where we can prevent uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and also uh, the most common complication that we see is also the multiple pregnancy, which can also be prevented.